director of Meko Limited. Welcome. Thanks, everybody, and uh, thanks uh, to Panasonic for inviting me along. Um, are we, are we clicking? Yeah, 4K. Whoops. We'll get there. Sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble with the. We're having some technology issues. We're, we're okay now. We're okay. Yeah, so a display without a person has no function. I spend my life at uh, display conferences and technical conventions and you can spend several days sometimes talking about pixels, frame rates, refresh, interfaces, colour gamuts, all of those issues and nobody says, what about the eye? You know, if, if you were trying to design an interface uh, for a communication system, you'd think that the engineers would first study uh, the, the uh, existing infrastructure, which is the people. So a display without a person has no function, and I often say our, our company's informal motto is uh, don't forget the people, you know, there's always a person. Um, and so I wanted to talk today particularly about some of the issues of perception of 4K, because I've heard a lot of people, uh, and quite credible technical people, people I respect, saying that uh, you can't see 4K. Um, I think you can. Uh, human perception is a very complex uh, issue and um, there's a famous effect, this, this is not about 4K, but I just want you to, to realise how complicated that thing behind your eyes is. It's not just about the eyes, it's about the brain. So has anybody seen the McGurk effect before? Well, one, one or two. Good, good, good. I like, uh, I like innocent people. <laughs> when, when I start the video in a moment, not yet, but in a moment, uh, can you concentrate on the guy on the right and see what he says? Um, then uh, after, after he said he's going to repeat something a few times, then try looking at the left and see what he's saying. And then go back to the right and see what he says and see what you can see. So can we try that? Ba, ba, so ba, look over here. Ba, ba, saying ba, ba, ba. ba now try ba, this one. Ba, 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 ba. Listen very carefully. Ba, 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 ba. Try going back. Ba, 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 ba. That's probably enough. Ba. <laughs> He's a great sheep, but. Um, <laughs> I hope what you saw was what most people see, which is if you look to the one on the right, he's saying bar, bar, bar. But if you look at the one on the left, you hear far, far, far. Did everybody get that? I could tell you that it was clever gaze recognition and beamed audio which was changing, it wasn't. He's saying bar, bar, bar all the time. When you hear far, 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 your brain is overriding your ears with your eyes. There's very complicated stuff going on up there which we don't understand. The, the bizarre thing about the McGurk effect is that there are researchers who have been researching it for 20, 30 years. They still can't stop that happening. It still works for them. It doesn't matter how many times you've seen it. Anyway, uh, back in, in the... Um, end of the 80s, the early 90s, I came up with Bob's second law. And Bob's first law, by the way, was everybody who buys a computer always buys another one. I thought of that one in about 1986, and so far, so good. They don't all look the same, but I never ever met somebody who said, I tried that computer thing, I don't think I'll bother again. Um, but the second law was, was driven by the fact that I've been in, in displays and monitors since before IBM had a PC. And at any stage, people always told me whatever we had was good enough. Uh, but it's never good enough. So everything that increases visual bandwidth, which uh, Marcus was talking about earlier, wins in the end. Uh, if we go back to the, the first broadcast, public broadcast uh, TV, it was in 405 lines and was described as high resolution because 405 line CRT was so much higher resolution than the 30 line bared mechanical TV system which had been demonstrated up to then. In the 60s, I remember when we switched to 625 lines. Anybody remember 405 lines switching to 625 lines with PAL and CCAM in the 60s? Oh dear, I'm getting too old for this, <laughs> clearly. But in, in the 80s, 
uh, computer graphics started to really turn up the, the resolution because the resolution in TV didn't change from the 60s to the, to the noughties. Um, but in, in the PCs, uh, resolution decreased. I remember the IBM professional graphics controller, the PGC, anybody around remember that? Two and a half thousand pound. 3,000 euros for the monitor, 3,000 euros for the graphics card. You needed high resolution for CAD. Anybody know what it was? It was 640 by 480 because CAD needed really high resolution. And you had to be prepared to spend 6,000 euros to get that. And people said, why would you need that? CGA is good enough, EGA is good enough, VGA is good enough, Super VGA is good enough, XGA is good enough. It's always good enough, but it's never good enough. My good friend, uh, Dr. John Petty, always says, in graphics, too much is never enough. And he's right. So one of the reasons for writing them was a white paper um, that I produce, I think it's on the, on the press kit, uh, but it's available from Panasonic everywhere, I said Marcus, is I keep hearing people say, we don't need 4K because you can't see the difference. And so, even one of, one of the people who said this publicly and published stuff about it is somebody I deeply respect. And, and uh, they're wrong. Why are they wrong? Because they misunderstand 2020 vision. There's a feeling that 2020 vision uh, is, is the, the pinnacle of human vision, but it's not. Whoops. So 2020 vision is uh, just the average. It's the average vision uh, of what an average person, an average middle-aged person, can see at 20 feet. And there's the, the European equivalent is 66 meters. So a 2020 vision means that you can see what an average person can see at 20 feet or 6 meters. But plenty of people can see 2010, uh, which means that they can see at 20 meters what average people can see at 10. So it's nowhere near the, the maximum. Young people particularly can see a lot better than, than we old ones. And, and these, these calculations are done using uh, what's called a Snellen chart. And, and this is a way of looking at detail, but this was developed in the 19th century for a different purpose for, for measuring glasses. It's not about images. Now, um, you have the next one. The um, images and, and detail is always about viewing distance. So it can be very complicated to work out what you can see. You, you, the, the key thing is always what angle is subtended on the eye by the object that you're looking at. Um, and uh, typically, uh, if you're testing a lens, anybody here do photog photography testing? Do testing digital cameras and things? Yeah, there's a few nods. You use MTF functions and you use this kind of pattern. Because you, what you want to measure is the number of cycles per degree, the number of times in one degree of vision that the black and white change. Uh, 2020 vision is about 30 cycles per degree, approximately. So 2010 vision is about 60 cycles per degree. Now, one of the things that's driving 4K is, is the NHK work uh, to develop super high vision, uh, the 8K stuff that we hope to see in 2020, and I hope to see again next week in IBC, I don't know if they're going to be there. Really, really impressive. But the guys at NHK did human factors research. They looked at what uh, perception of reality viewers had at different cycles per degree. And there